Check one, two. Space cadet to mothership. Space cadet to mothership. Come in over. Hey, what's up, good people of the internet? It's your old buddy, KK. Thanks for uh, following along on all these uh, video blogs and podcasts I've been putting out lately. I've been just trying to put all the infrastructure in place to layer a bunch of interesting shit that's coming next on top of it. So I appreciate it. And, uh, you know, if you're a friend or a colleague, uh, help me out. Send this uh, podcast to other people. Get them to subscribe to my YouTube and stuff. Help me build this audience and, uh, yeah, grow from there. So anyway, I am headed from my cabin on Hornby Island this morning off to my studio at the Hornby Spark Makerspace. And I've really come to enjoy these little talks and drives to do story time. Today's story time is going to be about Burning Man. It's that time of year again, and all the peeps are packing on up and washing the dust off last year's gear and heading down to Black Rock City, Nevada for the world's biggest fucking do-it-yourself art experience. I'm not going this year. Always a bit of a bummer, but it's a big effort. And with me trying to move to Vancouver and get some of these companies off the ground and stuff, it's just not the right time for me to head down that way. But I'm sending my love and support to all the crews that are going down there. And I can't wait to see what you get up to. I've been posting some photo albums and essays from the last few days. Or in the last few days, I've been publishing a bunch of photo essays from previous years. And uh, that's the kind of stuff I want to talk to you about today. So I've been really lucky with my Burning Man experience. I heard about it first in 1998 when I was running Spark Online magazine back in the day. And... Uh, it intrigued me and we were able to cover the event for the magazine, but I was not able to go. Flash forward to 2005, me and Kim Cathers decided Burning Man was in our future and we bought tickets and uh, planned to go. And one thing led to another and uh, we weren't on the same page once Burning Man rolled around. So that didn't happen, but... A few years later, maybe like 10 to be exact, I was down at the Okeechobee Music Festival with Tyler Hansen and his whole crew, the Culture House crew, and we were building all the tea lounge and freaky art experiential stuff for what is otherwise a bigger music festival. And I met this strange cat. Uncle Charlie is a Burning Man OG. He's been building large steel monuments and sculptures out there at Burning Man since the beginning of time. I think like 20 years or more. And he is well known in the art world and in the Burning Man world. And he and I connected really hard at Okeechobee. He had brought out this exhibit called the Fleebler, Fleeble Flobbler. It was a huge eight-seated steel flaming teeter-totter that eight people could ride at a time and get it all rocking and rolling and I got out to control the flame effects and just hang with this crew it was really awesome it was so awesome that the next year at Okeechobee I uh, I decided to switch camps and move from the VIP uh culture house art support camp into camp with Uncle Charlie there and his ragtag band of merry scallywags. Yeah, and that formed a friendship. And, and Charlie invited me to join his Burning Man crew. He runs a camp called Ask Camp, which is perfect for me. Art support services. And he asked me to be the documentarian of their build. They were building a huge 50-foot tall metal sculpture. It was also a teeter-totter, but instead of eight seats on it, there was like two platforms on each side. You get like 30 of your friends to stand on one or the two sides of the platform and get the thing a rocking. I took a lot of work and it was pretty fucking dangerous, but a good time was had by all. The cock, you could fill it full of two cords of firewood and we burned it three or four times during the Burning Man week. So uh, the whole team of us, like 40, after this thing was constructed, would 
load up the truck with wood and drive the wood out to the sculpture, crawl inside the sculpture and load it all up with the wood and start the fire at the beginning of the night. Also, we would accept donation of meats and sausages, which we would put in the cock's ass. And after a night of shenanigans and riding the red hot ride, we'd flip the old poop chute open and out would fall hundreds of freshly done meat sticks ready to feed the people as the sun rose. Totally incredible experience. I got to go three weeks early with Charlie when Black Rock City hadn't even been built yet. None of the streets are up and none of the street signs are up. And you get to build and watch being built the city and all the art projects around you. In fact, by the time Burning Man rolls around, it feels like you've done and seen it all. And I shifted into a down gear once Burning Man rolled around and pretty much just hung out at camp and held court, let people wander on through and took them out to the sculpture. They had a really unique and awesome Burning Man experience. Uncle Charlie and I have stayed connected over the years. We've been some support to each other on a sobriety journey that we're on. And he's a good man who I love a lot, who has the most awesome community of collaborators and other artists that would just bend over backwards to help him achieve any creative dream. So. Charlie, I love you, man, and I can't wait till we can work together on, on something big and awesome. Oh, another thing. It's always nice to have a role and being the photographer was awesome, but it wasn't quite enough to make me feel like I was contributing. So Charlie saw that I was responsible, organized, and a leader, and he asked me to become part of the whole project. And so the, what the quartermaster does in the military, they're the guys that like, make sure all the supplies and tools are on hand and safe and sharp and gassed up and ready to go. And so Charlie flipped me the keys to two semi trucks and I became the guy who was in charge of making sure that everything was uh, where it was supposed to be, when it was supposed to be there. And that uh, if someone couldn't find something, I would probably know where it was. And it was a, it was an awesome role for a guy who's great at observation and likes knowing everything that's going on out there. And, uh, I was super grateful to flex my muscles in that way. Also at Okeechobee, I met another guy called Tyson Ayers and his uh, partner, let's call her Le Leah Desjardins, even though I'm not sure that's how you say her last name. This is the sweetest couple. They're musicians and educators. And uh, Tyson's got a really cool concept for building sound caves. These are like immersive rooms made out of the harps extracted from grand pianos where you can perform or listen to music. Leah does tea ceremonies and they're really quite incredible. The five walls of the pentagram sound cave are built with these piano harps and then the roof is built of piano harps and the resonance in there is simply incredible. I think the experimenting with those sound caves led Tyson to dream big and and so he conceived of a large scale project that combined five sound caves together with a huge pagoda into a sculpture called the shrine of sympathetic resonance sympathetic resonance is a really cool musical concept where the sound vibrations for one thing resonate or make vibrations in another thing and so one thing i think of is like when i'm driving down the road in my truck and there's a a load tied down and the strings are tight, the ropes are tight. As you drive down the road, those uh, strings will start to vibrate like a low frequency guitar string. And uh, in fact, if you're to put one twist in that rope, the string, the sound that, that string makes would be up an octave. Two twists up two octaves, three twists up three octaves. As you shorten the length of the rope, the wavelength changes, and uh, that's pretty cool. Anyway, the sound cave tuned to the resonant frequency of the earth, the low drum that's given off. And so over the course of a year, we collected 55 grand pianos from around Oakland and San Francisco. We essentially turned half of our crew into a moving crew off picking up uh, 
picking up people's busted instruments and bringing them back to our warehouse and taking them apart. And with a team of 50 or 60 collaborators, we were able to essentially construct 50 foot tall, sympathetic sound resonant pagoda, and then transport that to Burning Man and build it. Again, we got to show up super early, be with a crew of exceptional do-it-yourself badasses and makers. And a real community was formed around the building of that project. The sculpture in the end was incredible. So many different things happened there. Concerts happened there. Weddings happened there. Found people making love, sleeping out. Photo shoots. It was just a beautiful space. And unlike Uncle Charlie's Red Hot Cock, because the Shrine of Sympathetic Resonance was made of wood, in Burning Man tradition, we got to burn it to the motherfucking ground. So our buddy Ian Tuma landed, led a big burn crew. We disassembled all the paints and electronics and toxic things from it. And the night before the man burned down, we had thousands of people assembled in a perimeter around the shrine to watch it burn. I'll try to drop some photos of these projects into the, this uh, video here. As those of you who know me know, I'm not that good at editing stuff. I like to do one take wonders where I do my best. If I mess up, I stop and, and say, I'm sorry and keep going. And I try not to edit it just so that I can keep the info flowing and come across as authentic as possible. But anyway, I'm sure there's lots of other Burning Man stories trapped inside those two things, but that's the stuff I wanted to share for you with you for now. Put it all down on the permanent record. I'd love to hear what you guys want me to talk about. I got all sorts of things on my brain, a mix of future stuff I'm working on and past stories of projects and companies that have never seen the light of day. So we were having a real fun time doing this and getting back in touch with everybody. Seriously, from the bottom of my heart, thanks for following along and tuning in for supporting me. And uh, yeah, if you got cool stuff that you're up to, get in touch. I love doing my weekly community shout outs where I spread some love around, let everyone know what peeps are up to and uh, yeah. So I'd love to hear from you. I'd love for you to share this far and wide. And uh, yeah, check out that Dent the Future post I just put up. It's a conference happening in Santa Fe in one month. And I would love it if all the friends of crew descended upon the Dent the Future Festival and we all got to hang out together. So if you got the time, you got the money, let's figure out how to make it happen. I can try to get some discount codes going for peeps. I think it's about 2,900 bucks or something. So anyway, worth it. Chris Crid from Hornby Island. Over and out for now, internet.